So per the guide, uh, we're going to work through some of these exercises. Um, this is mini test. Um, it's tricky to get running and whatnot, so uh, I figured I'd just record this little screencast. So you should have um, Pry installed, and so to run this test, um, you can see we're we're CD'd into this. Um, so I, the ls or list command shows the readme in strings.rb. We can see where I am right now by typing pwd. That stands for print working directory. Um, so I'm inside of uh, this is everything that's on my machine. And then this is this directory. So Ruby exercise data types strings. Um, and I can do ls and see the strings.rb. So I'm going to do Ruby strings.rb. And, that's, and then hit enter, and that's going to run the file. So this you probably won't get um, on your machine. Maybe you will. Um, you can ignore it. The important stuff is the running options, running, and then all of these S's. Um, so great. So this means we're running it successfully. Uh, so this is the file that I'm actually running. Um, and I want to make this first test pass. Uh, so hopefully you read the mini test guide. You know that every test has to begin with test underscore, um, and then a skip makes mini test not run that test. So we're going to remove that skip, and then I'm going to run this test again. So Ruby um, string.rb uh, no file there. Okay. So I'm going to mention something else that I use a lot. Um, String.rb doesn't exist, but strings does. So usually when I run a file, I'll just kind of start the characters. And then I'll hit tab, and it'll try to finish um, the entry. So I'll do that again. Ruby, if I hit tab twice, it just brings up all of the list of options. So I can hit S, hit tab again, and there's strings.rb. So it's a handy way if you're like me and not great at typing. OK. Um, so we got an error, which is what I expected. Um, undefined method underscore 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 for Alice string, um, and then it says it's in the test one, which is on strings.rb line 10. Um, and then the actual failure was on line six. So it's great. I'm going to move this over a little bit this way so I can see all of these things. This is also how I usually have my test set up. I like my terminal nice and tall on one side and then seeing all the code on the other side. And I'll make that a little bit bigger as well. Uh, so undefined method underscore underscore line six. go uh, line six so it's inside of this test which is good that's what we expected um, and then strings dart RB line 10 is where we actually got the failure uh, so line 10 um, so we uh, so okay so let's go ahead and unpack this a little bit this test um, starts with a name equals Alice uh, and then it says in place the line below call a method on the name variable defined above to achieve the expected output. Uh, so what is the expected output? It's this. And then this assert equal is a very common mini test assertion, which you should be familiar with by now, where we expect the expected variable here to be the same as the actual variable here. Um, so another way of writing this, I could comment this out, is expect assert equal Alice. Uh, sorry, typing is hard. Um, and name, because this name here. So if we run this test again, uh, it'll fail, actually. So technically, name there was defined like this. So we should get the same error. Uh, yep, undefined method, blah, blah, blah. OK, so uh, underscore, underscore, underscore isn't actually a method. So let's just try assert equal Alice name. Um, oh, and I mentioned something else that I totally forgot to mention. You can hit the up arrow on your terminal. Um, or on your keyboard, and it'll pull up the last command that was run. So that's how I usually rerun stuff. I just hit the up arrow, uh, that pulls up the last command, and then I hit enter. Um, oh, string.rb wasn't a thing, so it also goes through multiple um, previous commands. So if you do twice, you'll pull up the wrong thing. So I'll just do ruby uh, string.rb and run that. OK, cool. So expected Alice with a capital A and got actual Alice all lowercase, um, which makes sense. So let's I'm going to control Z out of this and get us back to the format that we had earlier. Um, so now if I take that off, we will get the same error again. So these are all different ways of formatting the same thing. So we want Alice um, with capital A. 
So let's do name dot uh, upcase because we know that upcase is a string method available in Ruby. And we run that, and we got the actual result was Alice in all uppercase, but we expected Alice with just a capital A. Uh, so um, let's use the capitalize um, string method in Ruby. Cool. So that passed. Uh, so you know it passed because, one, there's no failures, and two, this little tiny dot right here means it passed. So we're going to call this done. So let's move on to test two. Uh, take out the skip. We're going to run the tests. It's going to fail. Um, undefined method here. So we're going to just take this off and see what uh, what it gets. So we know um, name it wants Alice, and the actual was A capital L lowercase I capital E C lowercase E. Um, so uh, we want to do dot something here again. Uh, and we tried that a moment ago, and we can do upcase. Uh, that happens to be a method available. And it'll pass. So we now have got two passing tests. Let's move on to test three. Um, so call a method to ex achieve this. So expected. I'm just taking off the underscores so I can see, so I can run the test and see the error. Uh, expected Alice actual lease or something. Uh, so we'll do name dot. If upcase made everything up, I'm going to assume that downcase makes everything small. Ruby strings, downcase. Cool. So we've got, we're passing. Cruising. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, we'll run this test. Uh, what I like to do also, or what I recommend you do, is as you run the tests, um, try to anticipate if there will be an error message or not. So for instance, you can look at this test. We Cert equal the expected and the actual. Um, right now, the actual is going to be not rhyme, but it's going to be. It's we're going to get a no method error for all of this um, underscore underscore underscore. Right? Let's try. It. Boom. Undefined method. Blah blah blah. So we're going to take that off. Now, what do we expect? We expect uh, this to not match because the actual is going to be this rhyme, which is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, that's really hard to say. And we actually want to get um, this gibberish. And sure enough, uh, so expected uh, is when it, so this is another format. So earlier it was showing this where it's expected, uh, um, expected Alice actual that. When you have longer lines of mismatched expectations, the expected line is the line that's marked with a uh, dash right in front of it. So this is the expected. Um, and then the actual sign line is with that, which is marked with a plus, which is this. Um, and so this is just a little key right here. And this formatting will make more sense. Uh, this is kind of git diff-like formatting. So as you deal with git, you'll see this more. Um, all right, so picked I don't picked a pickled peppers. What is the relationship between these two things? Um, oh, uh, Peter. Okay, so this is just this line backwards. Ah, lovely. Uh, so let's do... Um, I am now going to uh, open up a new tab, and we're going to do some Googling. I have some ideas here what might work, but I recommend... Uh, Googling all the time. So we're going to do Ruby string um, backwards. Reverse a string in Ruby. Stack overflow. This seems promising. Um, how do you reverse a string in Ruby? I know about string reverse. OK, so string reverse seems promising. So let's do Ruby docs docs string reverse because uh, we want to see the actual docs, or I want to see the actual docs. Uh, so string, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. So down here, methods, There's gonna, one of these is going to be reverse. Um, I don't like reading text because, like, lists, so I'm not very good. So I'm going to do command F and then uh, do reverse. And reverse returns a new string with characters from string in reversed order. So uh, stressed.reverse is desserts. Perfect. So I think this is going to work. Uh, let's bring Adam back, 
and do rhyme dot reverse reverse because I can type and spell. Boom, passed. All right, we're cruising. Uh, we're gonna do one more and then I'll stop the video. Uh, so test five, we're going to take the skip out. We already know that that's going to come back with a no method error, and I don't care, so I'm just going to run the test, and it's going to say tickling and kicking doesn't work. Um, in the place of the line below, call a method. So what is the method we should call? Ticking and kicking. Okay. Um, so here we're going to do something different. Uh, the gem we installed earlier is called pry. Um, and it lets you do a lot of cool stuff. So um, if you type in Atom pry and then hit tab, it does this binding.pry thing. And what that does is when the code execution gets through here and Ruby tries to execute this line, it's going to throw you into a interactive Ruby session in that context. A lot of words. Uh, what it means is the I just ran the tests. So this code should all look familiar to you because um, it's this code. Um, and then this binding.pry shows that we're now inside of this method. So we have all of these variables available to us, which is particularly useful. So we can call word, and we get ticking. We can call actual, because that's a method here. We get that, and then we can call expected, and we get kicking. So the reason I'm here is because we can now do word, which is the stuff we're playing with, and I, we can call stuff on it. So I can do like word.reverse and it reversed it. I can do word dot, and all of these don't actually change the underlying variable. Um, so word is still gonna be reverse. So word dot upcase is going to be upcase. Word dot downcase will be unchanged. So we want word ticking to equal kicking. So we can do word uh, dot, um, there's a couple different ways we could do this. Uh, there's a method called gsub, which uh, swaps out characters or strings one with the other. Um, you could do word.pop. What will that give us? OK, we could turn this word into an array and then pop off the first item of the array and then put in a new one and join it again. But that's complex, so we'll just do a gsub. Um, so what that means is we should look at the gsub docs. Um, I'm cheating. I just happen to know what this is. So we could do Ruby change one letter in string to another, because that's kind of what we want to do. Placing a character in a string, so this is going to be helpful. Uh, Ruby forum, eh, I want overflow. All right, so letters, blah, blah, blah. For some reason, I don't know if this is actually going to be helpful. I don't like that. We'll go back to the first answer. It looked like the setup the person was asking about was a bit too complex. Uh, so, replacing guest, I want to be able to take a string with underscores and replace those with spaces. Can tell me, someone tell me why this isn't working? Uh, okay, so this is basically what we want to do. Instead of underscore to spaces, we want t to k. Um, sub. So this person is saying it's doing what you think it is. Sub replaces the first. G sub replaces all. Um, so G sub, that's going to be my clue for looking at G sub. Uh, so Ruby, Ruby doc G sub. Whenever you come across a method that you don't recognize, um, look it up. So G sub pattern replacement, uh, blah, 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 returns a copy of string with all occurrences of pattern substituted for the second argument. So it's going to take two arguments. Pattern is typically a regular expression, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Uh, so this one's going to be a little bit trickier, but we'll make it work. Um, oh yeah, we're still here. So we can do um, word.gsub, and then there's going to take two arguments. Uh, and the method, uh, whatever, don't worry about the formatting. You'll figure it out. Uh, so we're going to swap out the T, and we're going to put in a K, and see what that gives us. Cool. That looks promising. Now, word didn't change. So we're going to just assume this would be the same. So we'll go over to Word. We'll do dot G sub. Uh, so it's going to take two arguments. We're going to want the final argument to be that K. And then we're going to wrap this K, or I'm sorry, this T inside of the regular expression marks. 
and then give it a go. So to get out of a pry session, you can type exit, and it exits. Uh, it doesn't work. If you change code here, it doesn't know that it changed as it exit that statement. So when you run a pry and then have stuff to change, you always just take the pry out and then rerun the tests. So we will run the test, and it passes. Cool. All right, I'm going to end the video here.